Hi, and welcome to Sparkle Tart. Hi, it's Kate, and I'm back with another month of the kissing class. And this month, we're looking at washi tape and all of the wonderful things that you can do with washi. And today, I'm going to use washi tape and deco tape together to create a really funky journal page. Now, I love making journal pages of all sorts. So this one will be uh, more along the lines of a scrapbook page or a scrapbook layout. To create the background, I have some beautiful silver deco tape, and this is one of the new wide deco tapes from Express It. Some Tim Holtz washi tape, a beautiful Payne's blue gray Daniel Smith watercolor, um, the Long John's silver moonshadow mist from Lindy Stamp Gang, and of course some stencils and other little bits and pieces to make this work. Now I'm going to put this on a piece of white uh, cardstock which I'll then mount into my craft uh, journal. So I need to make sure that the colors I'm using will work with both the craft background and the image I'm using. So that's why I've chosen to use Moonshadow Mist. So the silver will match the image and the brown base tone will match the craft cardstock. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to need to do is add my washi tape. Now because I'm going to add layers and liquids over the top, I need to add this in a way so that they will still stick and look gorgeous. So instead of just applying the washi onto the cardstock, I'm going to add a layer of matte gel underneath it first. Now while the matte gel is still wet, I'm going to apply the washi over the top so that the gel acts a little bit like glue. Now you can choose to put the matte gel just where you're going to have the washi, you can choose to coat the whole page, or you can do what I'm doing and apply it in sort of a little bit of a scruffy manner. So it's not perfect, you're going to have little bits of the actual paper peeking through. And what this will mean for your finished piece is that anything you apply over the top, so the paint or the Lindy spray, will take differently to the uncoated paper than it will to the matte gel coated paper. So you'll get a little bit of variation there, which is what I love. Now I'm also going to add some of the matte gel over the top of this layer of washi just to make sure it all sticks down properly. Now because it's matte gel going over a shimmery washi I do run the risk of changing how it looks so we'll just have to see what happens as this dries. Alright so it turns out that as it dries it does get some of its sparkle back but popping matte gel over the top does reduce the shimmer from the deco tape. So I'm going to need to add some of this back in because I really do want that shimmer popping through my project. And I'm ready for the next step. So I have the matte medium over the washi tape and over the original deco tape which is now this beautiful subtle grey. And then I've added the same deco tape back over the top without the matte medium and you can see the difference. So matte medium over the top, there's still a little bit of shimmer but it makes it look more like a soft matte silver rather than the beautiful uh, shimmery silver that it's intended to be. So I have a gorgeous Tim Holtz stencil. This one is the tiles design. And what I'm going to do is randomly add this molding paste over my background. Now I am trying really hard not to cover up all of my shimmer spots. Really hard. And I have to make absolutely certain I've got this applied everywhere I want it before I move the stencil. Now while it's wet you've have got the opportunity to um, scrape off any areas that you don't like. Now it's time to add a little colour. I'm going to start with Payne's Blue Grey. Now this is a Daniel Smith watercolour and these are crazy expensive but you only need the tiniest tiniest amount so they last forever so they're actually pretty good value. Now I'm adding a tiny little bit of the watercolour um, to my craft mat and adding water to make it nice and liquidy so I can add it to my background. And I'm just going to spritz some water 
onto my background it just so it runs when I add it to it. Now I'm just so make sure that's mixed up really well. I'm just going to add it to some of those little areas between the texture paste. Now it will run over the top of the actual texture paste as well. And if any of those areas end up looking a bit too dark, the easiest thing that you can do is just spritz it with some more water. Now if you'd like any of this to be a softer colour, like on the edges here, just add some water to those sections so that the colour bleeds. Okay, so that's the first layer. And now I'm going to add some of the Long John Silver. Now this is a Moonshadow Mist, so it has quite a bit of brown in there and it will help balance this grey out. And I'm going to add that in two different ways. I'm going to flick it on and I'm also going to use a little eyedropper to add it in more concentrated sections. Now if any of that's too strong you can either dilute it with some water or blot it off with a paper towel but I quite like sort of how that's going here. Now I need to walk some of this colour back a little bit because my image is quite pale and it's got some bright blue in there so I need to introduce some bright blue into this background. So I have some Ecoline ink and this is a beautiful water-based ink. I'm going to use a clean pipette to just drip this onto my project. Now being water-based, if I add a spritz of water to the top of this, it will help dilute it. If I add a little bit of water, I'll get a very opaque white color. If I add a lot of water, it'll sort of blend into the background and just soften and tone down those other colors, which I'm going to do both. Now before this dries, I'm going to add some of the Tiffany Lou's blue into the background, just so that as this dries overnight, the colors blend and soften a little and that blue becomes part of the overall piece. I don't want it to stand out too much. Now if you feel that the opaque white paint has sort of hidden too much of your background, just grab a piece of paper towel and you can dab it off. This is the time if you would like to reveal uh, or bring forward any of those background elements. For example, the silver washi tape. Just dab some of the opaque white or the colour off from the top of the tape and that will make this stand out a lot more clearly when it's dry. Now, I might like to add in a little bit more brown. Um, I'm going to use the same color Moonshadow Mist, so Long John Silver, just so that the piece isn't too gray. And you can add and take color away until you're happy with it. But keep in mind, as it dries, these colors will lighten and turn a lot more transparent. So I've used some matte medium, and this one is a little bit thicker, to glue my uh, background onto my journal. Now I have some ink pads here from Ranger. All of my background elements are now dry and I have this gorgeous pale sort of neutrally but with a hint of blue uh, colored background. When all of those layers of paint have dried some of the washi and deco tape on the background is peeking through a little bit more than I was expecting it to which is just perfect. So you've got that hint of pattern just sort of peeking out with a hint of glitter. Now it's time to add a little stamping. I have three archival ink pads from Ranger. I've got Watering Can, Shadow Grey and Aquamarine. I'm going to pair these with a few Christmassy stamps just to add a little bit of pattern and a bit more interest to the background. Now there's no technique here, I'm just stamping randomly, um, adding a little bit of colour and a little bit of pattern. With the watering can and the aquamarine, if the colours are a little too dark, stamp off onto a piece of scrap paper first. This removes a little bit of the ink and then continue stamping on your journal page. Now, this will make sure that you're not having any of those colours take over from that beautiful background. Now, the wonderful thing, because we've got uh, paint and matte medium on the background, if any of those stamps look a little bit dodgy, just grab a baby wipe and rub it right off. Don't scrub too hard or you'll remove some of the paper, but you can create some interesting shadow effects with this. So, it's great for removing mistakes 
and creating a little bit of interest. The next step is to grab your main images and a whole batch of embellishments and sort of try them out and see how they look on your background. You'll find some things just sort of go so well and others, doesn't matter where you put them, just don't look right. If it doesn't look right, don't use it. You can try changing the color or making it shorter by cutting bits off, but often if it doesn't look right to start with, it's just not gonna work on your page. So I'm going to have a play with some embellishments and I'm going to mount my two photos onto some cardstock so that they have a little bit more body and then get to embellishing this background. And I'm going to do that by starting with some embossing powders from Lindy's Stamp Gang. I've got Morning Glory Azure and Queen Sheba's Silver. Now both of these are similar to the colors that I already have in the background so they're going to coordinate beautifully. I'm going to use my Versamark pad, my trusty Versamark, and the Queen of Sheba's Silver to add some color to these gorgeous Imaginarium chipboard designs. Now I'm going to add the Queen of Sheba's Silver to these little squares, and I'm going to add the Morning Glory Azure to the beautiful word Mischief, which perfectly sums up my mischiefy little kitten. Now I need a few more elements to bring this together. So I'm going to make a little circle out of some Prima wire thread just to help focus the eye on the page because it is reasonably busy. I'm going to use a little bit of ribbon that I'll add to the background underneath these chipboard pieces to help give the page a bit of structure. Now it's the fine, thin, sheer organza ribbon, so it's not going to interfere too much with the background or the colour, but it will help sort of give that um, somewhere for your eye to move around the page. I'm also adding a few globs of craft glue mixed with glitter. Now this will just sort of give a satiny, glittery effect. You could leave this out if you wanted to. I was just having a little experiment and a little play. I actually quite like the way it looks though, so I've left it in. Now I'm making sure I've done this before I add the ribbon because that craft glue is also going to help glue the ribbon onto the page. So it serves a dual purpose there. The ribbon and glue layer is dry. It's time to start adding all of your other elements. Now I'm going to use glossy accents to stick all of my bits of chipboard and flowers and leaves and metal embellishments to the page because I know that this will work well for all of those different products and stick them all down really, really well. So add a little bit of glossy accents, carefully position all of your embellishments and then it might be time to add a tiny little bit of glitter. Just, just a little, well, maybe a lot. <laughs> now, before I add the glitter, I'm going to add some mini art stones from Prima. And these are part of Finnabar's range. Now, I love how these look. They've got lots of texture and you can either add color to them or leave them white. For this project, I'm going to leave them uncolored, well, mostly. I might add a little stickles to them over the top. And I'm going to add them sort of just in random areas to help emphasize that texture. Now I'm going to try hard not to cover up too much of my background because I want that deco tape showing through and the washi tape, but I do want some of these little art stones on my project. Now once again I'm using glossy accents to add them because I know it dries clear and it will really hold these to the background. Now as the finishing touch I'm applying two different colors of stickles. I have frosted lace which is a really pretty white or creamy color and it's stardust which has a bit of iridescent color to it. Now I'm going to apply this over the top of some of those mini art stones and a little bit on the wire thread just for a bit of extra bling because you know there's never too much bling. <laughs> and my page is finished. Now, without all of that work to create such an interesting background and one that matches the image and the paper, this would not look half as pretty. So you can see that all of those little elements are still visible in the finished bit from the very first deco tape we added right through to the Payne's Grey and the Moonshadow Mist. And the elements that I've added on top, so the stark white and a little bit of sparkles and the embossed chipboard, really just help bring those background colors together and finish off that page so beautifully. So I hope you've enjoyed my washi tape journal page and I'll be back next week with more. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to give me a like and if you'd like to see more from Sparkle Tart, subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
There's a product list below the video in the description and you can connect with me via YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter or Google+. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.